there is a class available in C++ called vector. And it's not the kind of vector you learn about in physics where you have like a speed and a direction. It's more like an enhanced array. So if you've studied Java at all, it's, it's kind of like an array list. Um, it's a list of values and then there are methods associated with it that you can use to manipulate the values inside. Um, so the first thing you need to be able to use this thing is to bring in the library. So I'm going to include vector. And then there's a couple of ways you can go about creating one of these guys. Um, so the first thing you should know is that vector is what's called a template class, which means the people who wrote it um, left it up to you as the programmer to decide what type of information it will hold unlike string where the type of information that's being stored is a, a series of characters and you can't change that. With vector, you can choose the type of information that's stored in there. So here's what it looks like. Um, it always starts with the word vector when you instantiate one of these. Um, and then inside these little brackets, you get to choose what type of info the vector holds. Now it all has to be the same type, just like with a regular array but you can choose for any particular ve vector what type of information you want to store. So let's just start with integers. Um, and then the next thing that I choose is the name or identifier for the vector, and this is the usual rules. So let's just call it list, because it's a list of stuff. Um, and there's actually three variations of the constructor, um, which is a fancy word for the, the line that you use to instantiate it. So this is the first version. Um, this creates a vector of integers that I'm calling list, um, but it doesn't specify a size, so I would have to resize it later or put stuff into it to grow it later if I actually want to store values. So the first version of the constructor doesn't give a size. The second of the version of the constructor does give a size, so let's say I want five items in there. This will make a list um, with five elements so I can store five different integer values. Um, when I construct using just one parameter and it's numeric, initializes everything to zeros. I've written a little helper function to draw us a picture of this, so I'm just going to call it and show you what this vector looks like that I've just created. So here's down here. Here's my index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Inside the elements of the vector are all zeros right now because I didn't tell it otherwise. Um, and then the third constructor that I can use, it specifies the size or the number of elements. And then it also spot specifies what value I'd like to fill it with. So let's say I want a 99 in all of them. I put comma and 99, and I can fill them all with the same value right away. Okay, so now all my values, all my elements have the value 99. So those are the three constructors the vector comes with. Um, there's also some additional ways to get information in there. So let me show you what those look like. Um, this is kind of an older way and there is an update um, that lets you skip it, but I want you to be comfortable with what it looks like in case you see that in an example program. Um, when I have a regular old array, um, I can do this thing where I just set a list of numbers to set the things to, so 2, 5, 4, 3, 1, whatever. A list of numbers um, and then that array picks up those numbers in that order. And sometimes you'll see that somebody does that makes a list and then they want to basically take the values from this array and map them into the vector and the way that you do this looks like this so you make the array you make the vector and then you say list.assign and it takes two parameters um, the first is the name of the array I want to map to it so it's nums and then this is a little bit weird but it's the name plus how many things are in there so I've got one two three four five values in there and that will take these five numbers and map them into my vector. And when I show my vector, they should be in there. Let's verify that that worked. Okay, 25431, okay. And then um, recently, uh, someone must have decided, well, hey, this is useful. So can we just skip the part where we make this um, separate array and use it straight in the vector? And so it is now possible to do this, where you can just say, make this thing set it equal to this, and skip this assign line. Um, I want you to be aware of it in case it's in a tracing problem or something that you see out there in the wild. So that will also do the same thing. It'll take these different values. Oh, I left the semicolon in there. Right? Anyway, somehow. Um, 
and it will map those values into the vector. Okay. Um, what else can I do? I can resize this thing. So if I want to change it later, I can, let's say we want to cut it down to only two elements. So I've resized it down to two. What's it do? Well, it chops off the rest of them. So there's three leftover elements here. Those are gone forever now. So if I were to resize this again, oops, back to five, I don't get those elements back. They're gone. Let's just verify that. And so there it is. I get zeros in my new elements. Um, just like when I first constructed, if I want to fill these with something, I can specify the value to fill it with. So if I resize down to two and then resize back up to five, I can fill the leftover spots with threes if I want to. Okay. Um, I can also ask this guy what his own size is. So let's say I want to resize it to twice whatever its current size is. So I'll say I'll take two times disguise dot size this is very much like dot length with a string so now this guy will double his size and so now i have a 10 element vector the new ones have zeros unless i go here and put comma fill them with something specific and that should give me specific stuff okay just like with strings we can use this size um, information to run a loop to visit all the elements in the vector. So let me reveal what the code inside my show vector function looks like. Um, these are just my top labels of the thing. Um, the main important part is that I am visiting all the elements um, to start at the beginning. My first index number is zero. I'm gonna go up to, but not include the size because the size itself is one past the end, just like it is in the length and strings. I'm gonna count up by one each time. Um, Right here, the C out of I is where I'm getting the index number to print. So if I want that, I can put it on the screen. And right here, the C out of V sub I, notice there's square brackets, um, is where I'm getting the value that's actually in the element printed out. So that is how I get and print the picture of the entire thing. Um, I can also access individual pieces of this guy and change them to whatever I want. So if I want to go to element number one, and change it currently it's a five in there maybe I want to change it to a nine I can access them individually like that so I can set it to a new value so here this is the nine that's appeared in there I can also um, just see out what's in that particular spot so let's see out what's in list element zero and I'll comment this out so it doesn't print my picture again and so I can get a particular element out. So there's a two at element zero, which is right, because that's the two right there. Um, so that's a little bit about how you mess with vectors.